Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, are you ready for today's daily bread? Are you ready to receive from the Lord? Join me right now as we release our faith. Say, Father, I make demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. See, I always tell you this. It's important that we make this demand. And we're making it in faith. Your faith must be aligned. And then when you make this demand, have a heart to receive. You have asked, then be expectant. Be expectant. Everything that shows up today as a need in your life, answer it answer it why because i asked god for my daily bread and he's giving it to me praise god you know the lord told us something at the beginning of the month during our fasting and prayer the lord has said every challenge that you face this month look in it for the testimony that will come out from it yeah every challenge that will come this month look inside for the testimony that will come. Now, now when, when we say look inside for the testimony, don't just say, mm, it's God, do if not God. No, no, no. A real testimony. This thing has come. You remember Jesus when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead. He said, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you will see the glory of God. How can you say you will see the glory of God that in a dead man's situation? What glory? Now today, today you say, wow, do you know, I never knew that I had so much strength until I went through that thing. I think the glory of God, what wanted to show me is how I, I thought my life was finished. But ah, I realized, well, Jesus came and rose Lazarus from the dead. That was the glory he was talking about. See, so when we, when we desire things, let's not let our minds become a limitation. See, trust in the power and the ability of God in your life. Trust in it. Don't place a limit. You remember when Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. He said, eh, I know on the day of resurrection. See, see where her mind was. Because, I mean, what else could she believe? This guy has been dead for four days. And by now he's thinking. Let, let no limitation be placed in your heart on what God can do for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, thank you for what you're doing in us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So we're looking at covetousness. This thing called covetousness. And I was sharing with you yesterday because Jesus said we should be aware of it. Hebrews tells us, let your life be without it. <clears throat> now, I'll give you a, a perfect example. You know, yesterday, I was talking to you about a hundredfold. Okay? How, how people reason out of the scriptures, out of the mind of God. So, a man thinks a hundredfold, is, it means getting 100 of those things. No. No, 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 no. No. Now, is it, but is it possible, for example that I give a car and sometime I realize I have a hundred cars. It's possible. It's possible. But that's not the direct meaning of a hundredfold. Because the truth is, if you're a giver, by the time you have a hundred cars, you would have given more than 10 cars probably. So you shouldn't be having hundred cars at that point. You should be having maybe by this stage, you have a hundred thousand cars. You understand what I'm talking about? So, so that's not the answer physically that physical thing possession is not the answer to your prayer to your actions you see a hundredfold is it means completeness so if i give out something and i'm believing god for a hundredfold what i'm believing god for is the completeness of that thing so i give out money i give out a thousand naira or a thousand dollars what am I believing God for? I'm not believing God for $100,000. I'm 
I'm believing God for completeness where finances is concerned. So whenever I want to do something that I need money, money will show up for it. I may not have it in my bank account. Are you getting what I'm saying? But once I need to do something, the finances for it will just show up. That's a hundredfold. Now, I, I, I realized this recently, you know, practical in my life. Many years ago, you know, as a student, um, we had the new pastor come in to town. And it just came to my spirit that, okay, um, uh, we should uh, furnish his house for him, just to make him comfortable. You know, so I gathered the brethren and I said, hey, this is what's in my heart. What do you guys think? They said, oh, we are with you. You know, so uh, a few of us, not everybody per se, I think about amongst the leaders and a few others, we, we put money. We were students then, you know, just believing God and trusting God. So we put money together and we're able to uh, set up that house for him. And he prayed a prayer. Because, oh, he was, he was glad and amazed. He prayed a prayer. He said, wherever you go to in this life, you will never lack accommodation. Now, sometimes, you know, people pray prayer for you. <clears throat> but you see, you realize something that there are times you do things in life that you're not just doing it because you are good. You're not just doing it for doing it. You're doing it because there is, there is a connection the Spirit of God is trying to make in that situation. That I think for me, now, now we all did it. But I, I believe for me, maybe for some other person, but I'm giving this because, I'm, because of what I'm about to share with you. For me, that was a moment that the Spirit of God was, um, was doing something in me. Okay, so when he made that statement in that prayer, I knew in my heart that, oh, this is it. This is why we did this thing. This is why this came to my heart. So I believed. And trust me, I realized over the years, now this was many years ago, I realized over the years that for some reason, it works that way. I enter into any city. I find this so easy. I get accommodation. Now, the one that there was something that happened a few years ago that just cemented that there. I say, ah, I said, Lord, this is awesome. I had gone to Israel, and we were going to Israel as a group, but I had to go a day before you know, to catch up the the you know the planned trip so it meant i had to take care of my own accommodation the day that first day okay so got to israel and i had booked for an accommodation for that night then we got there and then i realized my booking was cancelled because i didn't know then that restrictions have been placed on our nigerian uh, debit cards so I thought I had paid only to get there and realize that it was cancelled because they couldn't charge my card and here was the situation so I got to the hotel and they said oh your reservation was cancelled now actually it was cancelled because I received the mail when I got there okay it was cancelled when I was airborne now so I said okay but I'm here physically um, why don't I just pay? They said, oh, sorry, we're fully booked. When it was cancelled, other people were on it, so we, we, we gave it out. So the place, we're fully booked. I said, fully booked? Say, yeah. Okay, what do I do now? Mm. They said, you have to find another place. Okay, how do I find a place? It's strange. That's the first time I was getting to um, Israel. This was in the city of Tel Aviv. <laughs> what do I do? I don't know nobody. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, how do I move around? Where do I even go to? So I made a request. I said, please, can I use your internet? And they gave me access to the internet. I, I found another place. I said, okay, so I, I got there. Not too far from there. So I got there. I need a place. I said, okay, I wanted to charge my card. My card wouldn't work. I said, I was going on. So okay. Um, 
maybe I can get cash. So I went outside to withdraw from the ATM. It wouldn't work. And, and, and I actually had um, a few dollars on me that could pay for the room. But then they said, oh, in Tel Aviv, we don't do cash. Every um, booking must be paid. Hotels, I mean hotels now, must be paid with a, a card. Maybe I'm sure it's for security reasons. I said, whoa, really? I said, no hotel will take cash from. I said, wow, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I said, I'm in trouble. So I stepped out. Now my card wouldn't work. I couldn't, I was just there. I had cash, but they wouldn't accept it. So I stepped out and said, Holy Spirit, what would I do now? I can't be stranded now. Now that was my mindset. I wasn't there that like, yeah, God, I'm stranded. No, I can never, it can never come out of my mouth. Now when, when I face things like that, I know what to do. So I stepped out and said, Holy Spirit, what do I do? You know, so I went back in and I said, can I get access to your internet? And it gave me access to the internet. And I was just scrolling, scrolling. And I saw this hotel that was some distance away from that. I said, okay. Uh, by then I had gotten a cab that at the, the whole trip, the cab, they arranged the driver. So I called him back. He was the one that actually took me to that first hotel, thinking I was going to lodge there. He left. So I had called him back. I said, please, I need your help to move around. So I, I saw this hotel and by then he was there, he had met me. So we, I drove down to this particular hotel. I, I saw like something, my spirit just went for that hotel. Now I got there and the same story, we cannot take cash, your card is not working. Um, I stood and I've learned something over the years. When you step into a place where you have a crowd or where you have different people handling things, don't just walk up to anybody. First scan the area. And the same thing Jesus said to the disciples. First say, peace be unto this house. And you will find the son of peace in that place. It's a principle I use everywhere I go. So I looked around. I saw this lady. And to me, and that's the best way to explain it. I, I saw the, the peace in her. I, I, there was just a connection. So I walked up to her. I said, here's my situation. What do I do? And she said, no, they won't collect cash. Same old story. I said, yeah, so what do I do? And she said, mm, okay, I'm going to do this for you. I'll check you in to the room. You go rest, freshen up, eat, do whatever you want to eat. Then when you are ready, there is a branch we have by the beach. And because they are by the beach, they take cash. So I'm going to let you go there and hopefully um, they will accept your cash there and transfer the booking here to us. I said, will they do that? I said, I don't know. It's just an option to try. Mm. I said, okay, I'm ready to try it. I mean, in all these stories, someone has given light. So I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to the right person. And I did exactly that. I went into, so I was checked into a room I had not paid for in a foreign land. I slept in that room, woke up later. You get what I'm saying? And then I came down and said, I think I'm ready to go. And I went. Now, when that happened, I said, what's going on here? Then I remembered a hundredfold is working. Now, this is my own personal experience. Your, your, your own can be, you got a mansion, whatever it is. I, 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 that day, it dawned on me. I said, hey, a hundredfold is working. You can never lack accommodation. Wow. You see, the desire, why am I sharing this with you? It's the same thing, Jesus said, beware of conviction. So you're, here you are, you're sowing seed. But then you have to be aware of covetousness in your heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to be aware of covetousness in your heart. So I'm giving this seed. I'm not looking for one, 100 houses. I'm not looking for one. But hey, this is, this is one thing. Whenever, wherever I need it, I'll get it. That is a hundredfold harvest. When your mind is set on that, then you know that there is no covetousness in your heart. Now, now let's go to Hebrews. I'll show you something. 
this will bring um, these stories will bring understanding to your heart Hebrews chapter 13 now it says let your conversation be verse 5 Hebrews 13 5 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have be content with such things as you have why for he had said I will never leave you nor forsake you see this no win hmm. this thought of him being with you and not forsaking you is what takes out covetousness from your heart hmm. yeah he has said he will never leave me he will never forsake me that thoughts that realization is what drives covetousness from my heart so what happened in israel i knew he was with me so i was not afraid what any man can do to me i was not afraid see why oh i wish i had carried plenty of money no no he is with me that's enough i was content with that so now why is he with me he's with me to tell me what to do that thing see what we're dealing with is being careful to remove covetousness from your heart because God is going to bless you and you don't want covetousness to stand in the way because it will surely stand in the way of you inheriting life so the rich young ruler that came to Jesus covetousness stood in his way and he walked away sad Jesus actually was giving that man a uh, he, he was giving that man entrance into life and this is what life is actually life is reading your heart of covetousness life is understanding how successful you are without a dime in your bank account that is life so people look at you and they look at your bank account this guy is broke he doesn't have money and then the next thing, you have a need of $10,000. And you say, ah, I have this need of $10,000. Eh? I know how broke you are. You are finished though. How are you going to get this done? Say, don't worry, we'll get it done. And the next two hours, we've done it. Ah, hey, uh, maybe you have an account that we don't know about. Yes, of course, we have an account that you don't know about. You know nothing about our accounts, praise God. And didn't Jesus say, well, we should lay up our accounts? He said, we should lay up our treasures, not here on earth, in heaven. So you see, the thoughts that, listen, I have one who is with me, always with me. And number two, because of him being with me, there we, I have access to things that you don't see. This thinking takes out covetousness from your heart. Completely takes out covetousness from your heart. Praise God. Our time is up today. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you? God bless you today. Have a fruitful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.